you for joining me in this video series where we hear from AAN member neurologists and their patients about the value of the physician-patient partnership in rendering neurologic care. I'm Orly Avitzer, president of the American Academy of Neurology. Today, we are having a conversation about brain health and brain tumors with Dr. Katie Peters and her patient, Rudy Fishman. Dr. Peters is a neuro-oncologist at Duke and a member of the Brain and Life Editorial Board. And Rudy is Dr. Peters' patient. Welcome to you both. I'd like to start with your story, Rudy, uh, who you are and uh, how you met Dr. Peters. Well, in a nutshell, I'm basically a, a 50-year-old male living in Knoxville, Tennessee. I, I've been uh, diagnosed in 2018 with an astrocytoma in my brainstem and cerebellum. I wound up with Dr. Peters after uh, working with a few other sort of facilities and doctors of, of varying types. Um, I, I didn't have sort of the stereotypical brain cancer symptoms of seizures and severe headaches and stuff. I was just more having issues with like vertigo and fatigue and things like that. And nobody really suspected that I had brain cancer. They thought it was probably something else. I was diagnosed with a lot of other things and they all kind of made sense, but didn't make sense. Got an MRI. Uh, I had some sort of growth in my he head, and uh, long story short, wound up at Duke with Dr. Peters. Dr. Peters, can you tell us a little bit about when you first met Rudy and what you did for him and what his type of brain tumor is? Absolutely, and thank you for um, inviting us. Um, so um, Rudy has a brain tumor called an astrocytoma, and it's in the back of the brain called the posterior fossa, which is the cerebellum. Um, first of all, Rudy is, tumor is rare and Rudy is rare. Um, he's a rare individual um, and his tumor is rare. Um, these lower grade tumors are rare cancers, but when they're in the back of the brain like this, they're even rarer. Um, so the first thing we did was make sure that um, we knew the tumor markers of his tumor. Um, and then we also recommended a course of action, which included essentially therapies with um, um, chemotherapy and radiation, along with a drug called Avastin. In addition to those, um, those medical interventions, we always encourage people to remain active, both mentally and physically. And so that was um, part of our plan. And um, luckily, Rudy is up for the challenge because he um, definitely um, embodied the individual that wants to continue to move and continue to use his mind. Thank you. And Rudy, how do you do that? What is your activity level like and what do you enjoy doing? Well, very early on, Dr. Peters did mention that, you know, there's a lot of different ways and people like, like to research and have very sort of wishful thinking about different types of treatments and such like that. But Two things that are very clinically proven to actually get positive results are to be physically active and to use your brain. So I, I try to be uh, do both, really. So I, I walk every day and do physical therapy and do physical activities at home as much as I can. Um, and it, since I've been you know, working with Dr. Peters, I've gone from basically walking 500 steps a day to now averaging around six to eight miles a day uh, uh, doing that along with other physical activities. And then also I'm very involved in sort of creative endeavors. I do lots of videos like on YouTube, appear on podcasts. Just yesterday I was on a podcast, a cancer podcast talking about patient issues and things like that. So I'm always looking for ways to sort of, uh, you know, take the sort of ever present experience of having a, a brain tumor and turning it into a creative endeavor. What advice do you have to patients who are diagnosed with brain tumors based on all you've learned? I think it's really important to sort of advocate for yourself as well as also, and, and perhaps even more importantly, uh, remain human on some level. I think it's it's very can be very overwhelming to be diagnosed with something like this and get lost in the diagnosis. I think it's, even if you can't be the same person you were maybe before surgeries and chemo and radiation and all that, you can still be a very interesting person and do interesting things and uh, perhaps uh, 
perhaps even be a better version of yourself instead of worrying so much about who you used to be, which I know I struggled with a great deal. So. And Dr. Peters, do you have any other advice for people listening to this who may have been recently diagnosed with a brain tumor or their family members? Um, you need to be an advocate. You need to be um, um, a, a, an advocate for yourself and for your loved ones. So I would definitely encourage that. And seek out second opinions, um, at least for our subspecialty in neuro-oncology. We're a pretty small world, and we just want to find what can help our patients and to make their lives better. Great advice from both of you. I really appreciate your being here with us today and thank you for sharing all your thoughts.